Hi, I'm Doug Malone, Director of Vehicle Operations here at the Midwest Dream Car Collection. I want to talk to you a little bit today about our 1941 Cadillac Series 6 Jeep Convertible that we have here at the museum. Um, for 1941, Cadillac was pretty much all restyled uh, to what you see in front of you here today. Uh, a lot of changes were made, uh, which made it then one of the best-selling Cadillacs in a number of years for Cadillac in 1941. Some of the changes that we note on the 1941 a little different than the 1940 for the integration of the headlights. And we come around the front here. The 1940s, the headlights are mounted on top of the fender as a separate pod. So in 41, they became more unified with the fender to give more of a flow. Another change that we see on this beautiful car is in the way that the grill was done. Here again, 1940, the grill was more upright and the rest of the were housed separately from the grill. In 1941, they integrated them to almost blend in with the grill. Now the grill is something else that's new for 1941 that later became a standard feature on most Cadillacs was the A-crate design. So when you saw an A-crate grill on a car, you pretty much knew it was going to be a Cadillac coming down the road. Um, some other beautiful things on this car that we notice here, a little uh, applique right here below the headlights. Uh, this is kind of a blank out plate on the 1941 because there was an option of using fog lights on the car. So if the car had fog lights, this would have been removed and the fog lights would have gone right into where that, that VM one plate is. Of course, we have the beautiful Cadillac crest going in the front, front of the hood with the Cadillac name. Uh, lots of chrome on these cars. Another beautiful part about these cars is really the Art Deco design, kind of the torpedo style of the car. I look at this car and I think of Harley Earl's wide job uh, concept car that he came out with. A lot of the same features like the chrome strips on both fenders front and back. A lot of the lowerness of the car, the car set much lower. No more running boards on the cars. It is this beautiful piece of stainless steel trim on the rocker panel, but not a running board on the car per se. Um, a few other uh, design changes in the 1941 Cadillac was in the hood of the car. 1940s, there were two separate chrome uh, strips like this. 1941 went to one more streamlined, highlighted with the Cadillac crest at the very tip of it. Of course, then that goes up to the beautiful swooping hood and to the flying goddess hood ornament. Uh, just a gorgeous piece of ornamentation. Look at through the front windshield. But it's also the way to enter into the hood of the car. It's simply by lifting up on her, and then that unlocks the hood to be able to get into where the engine bay is. And here you get to see what powerhouses this beautiful car. Uh, it's a 346 V8 L head engine, uh, beautifully restored in this case. Uh, not a lot of other gizmos on here. We don't have power brakes and power steering and those types of features on this car. Uh, no air conditioning, so very easy to work on this car. It's a monoblock uh, cast iron block, so it's a very reliable, uh, heavy duty engine. Um, in front of this side of the engine, we're going to see this hose running along the, the inside fender here. What that is is the intake. It actually feeds in through here. So when you drive down the road, air comes in through up to this hose as part of the ventilation system for the, for the car. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in just a moment on the really extraordinary cutting edge uh, heating system in the 1941 Cadillac. But a very powerful engine, uh, about 150 horsepower. This was the first year that Cadillac had truly claimed that their cars would go 100 miles an hour with reliability. Uh, so a strong engine, uh, and about a zero to 60 speed of about 14 seconds. Not very fast in today's standards, but for a 1941 car that weighs in over two tons, that's a pretty impressive, pretty impressive, powerful engine and speed. So we'll lower the hook back down. Match it back. Come back around here to the side of the car. Um, this car is really marvelously restored and it was done correctly. That's the thing I always appreciate about restorations when they're done correctly. Uh, even down to the, the wheel covers, uh, the wheel discs here. Uh, this was the correct uh, uh, hubcap for the car. Uh, has the Cadillac crest on it with the red background. You could buy chrome trim rings to go around as an option, but this would have been the standard uh, wheel cover for the 1941. Uh, this does have the optional spotlight. It is a Cadillac brand spotlight. Um, this is a feature I think is kind of unique for the car. This little flipper here 
That simply is when you roll up the window, that goes up with the windshield or with the side window and becomes a unified piece. If you didn't have that on there, when you rolled the window down, you'd have like a six inch gap here for water to go down into. So this just simply folded down in there, made a nice smooth spot, deflected the water from going into the door. Four standard feature on the 4212 was the large uh, fender skirts. Here again, adorned with the Cadillac crest and the rubber guards to protect the fender from rock chips. Come around to the back of the car. Very graceful the way this flows from the front to the back. Uh, unique features with Cadillac starting in 1941 is where they put their gas caps. Um, in this case, like an all Cadillac stuff through 1957. It's hidden in the tail light. Lift it up here, and here's where it's tucked in. And that would follow through through 1957, every year hidden behind the left tail light. Come around over to here again. You can see inside the car. Of course, this is back. Power windows were still not a common feature in cars. Uh, so we have roll up windows, as well as little vent windows, uh, being able to be cranked out. And it all work very smoothly and work very nicely. The beautiful faux wood burl dash on the car. And we have our glove box over here. Fleece lined, very nicely done. And tailored out. So, I'm going to go back around the other side of the car and I'll show you some of the features on the inside. Of course, one of the new things for 1941 was the option you could get hydromatic automatic transmission first year for truly shiftless cars. This particular car does not have that. It still has a three-speed synchromission manual transmission, but the first year you get in on the Cadillac for Hydromatic Automatic was 1941. Oldsmobile actually came out with it a year prior and put on their cars, but typical with Cadillac, they let one of their other divisions try it out first to make sure it's going to work before putting it on their premium car brands. So um, the Cadillac did not get it until 1941. Um, into the car, beautiful layout on the dash, uh, very tastefully done, very roomy. One of the things that was added was about five more inches in width for 1941. I'm six foot three and I have more leg room than I could ever need. Uh, the emergency brake is still the, the lever instead of the pedal. On that side, we do have directional signal switch, typically where it would be on a car. Horn button in the middle, or horn ring I should say, bringing the large Cadillac crest on the inside. Uh, our shifter, your typical three on the tree type speed with first, second, and third. You reverse up in the back like this. Uh, operates very smoothly. Beautiful uh, knobs and limitation on all that. Very tastefully done. Um, up here, we have your typical cluster of options. We have our temperature gauge on the far left. Battery, uh, current charge, uh, gasoline. And oil pressure, all those tastefully done in a strip over here. Speedometer offset over here to balance out the clock on the other side. Very well done. Uh, so Dominar showing a little over 90,000 miles. I'm not sure if that's correct. Uh, but I'm assuming it probably is probably pretty factory correct. Um, there actually is no odometer on the bottom here. Uh, pretty rare for a car of this vintage. The adjustment for that's right down underneath the dash. Over here we would have the adjustment for the convertible top, headlights. Um, we'll talk about this in just a moment. Over here, you have your choke control. Then you put the key in, turn it, and push the start button to start the car. Uh, over on the far right over here, below the speaker grill, is a lighter, which I found unique on this car. I was looking at earlier. There's a lighter up here, but no ashtrays or ash receivers in the front, but there are in the back. So I guess you just flick your ashes out on the, the road. Another unique feature I found for 1941 was actually had a day-night mirror. I think that was pretty cutting edge for the time of 1941. Um, and of course, then the built-in radio, AM radio. Our FM didn't come out till later on cars, uh, so AM was pretty much the standard feature of all radios across the board. Uh, this one's pretty unique in the way that it works. It does have the push buttons to be able to set to your preset uh, radio stations, or you could push the button in to release the buttons, then you have control of the dial uh, for um, uh, adjusting the, the radio station that way. One of the features I wanted to point out about this car, which is really unique for 1941, was the new option of what we kind of today call a climate control thermostat. It's like we have in our house. In other words, you'd set it for a certain temperature, and the car would maintain that. 
Uh, Cadillac came out with this in 1941 for a heater. There's no air conditioning yet. But I should stop and mention that air conditioning was an option on Cadillac in 1941. Uh, they only made about 300 of them in, 300 of them in cars for 1941 for Cadillac because uh, it just was not a, a good system yet. Your, your preference on what temperature you'd like it to be, and then uh, the car would automatically through its system of allowing hot water in, hot water stopping, vents open and closed to keep the climate about that temperature inside the car. The unique thing is that the blower motors in the car underneath the seat, there's one under the passenger seat, on the driver's seat, which would shoot warm air out the front and out to the back passengers uh, back here. A separate blower motor assembly up underneath the driver or the uh, glove box area, which would operate the defroster and shoot some defrosted air uh, out this way. So really unique uh, system. Cost about $60 an option in 1941, which was quite a bit of money, but uh, uh, very uh, highly sought after uh, because when not, not a lot of cars even had heaters back in those days. Uh, so that was an option. So a little button down here on the floor. Uh, for us older folks, we know what that was. That was your automatic, uh, your, your turn your bright lights and your dim your headlights was right there. Uh, then you had your clutch, brake, and, and uh, accelerator pedals over here. Another unique thing I found about this was the original, or one of the original uh, lubrication labels. It's made out of metal. It's actual Cadillac crest. They have on the, the date and the mileage and when the next due date for the oil change was. And the Cadillac dealer would actually screw one of these onto your car every time you'd have the uh, lubrication change. So uh, anyway, beautiful example of a 1941 Cadillac that we have here at the Midwest Dream Car Collection. Hope you come by and see it in person uh, in the near future. And uh, we look forward to sharing more cars with you in the days ahead. Thank you.